Most of what you've heard about CBD is wrong. It's marketed as nature's cure for anxiety, depression, PTSD, but the science doesn't back that up. In fact, the only FDA approved CBD drug in the US isn't for mental health at all. It's for a rare form of childhood epilepsy. So if CBD isn't the miracle it's sold as, why is everyone convinced it works? Also, how come it's always right next to those totally legit dick pills at the gas station? And who am I to separate the science from the CBD snake oil? My name is Dr. Salman Aziz Mirza, triple board certified in adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and addiction medicine. And unlike your favorite influencer with a CBD sponsorship, I don't get paid to hype products. Just to tell you the truth. Let's bust the three biggest CBD myths right now. Before we get into that, here's a quick recap of what CBD actually is. CBD, short for cannabidiol, is one of over a hundred compounds that are found in the cannabis plant. Unlike THC, it doesn't get you high. It mostly acts behind the scenes, influencing brain systems that control things like mood, sleep, and stress. Now, let's start with the biggest CBD myth, that CBD cures depression. You've probably seen influencers saying it balanced their mood or even got them off their meds completely. But here's the problem. When researchers actually put this to the test, the results just don't hold up. The studies are small, the evidence is shaky, and the hype is running way ahead of the science. The second myth is that CBD erases PTSD symptoms, almost like it's some kind of trauma eraser. Take a dropper and boom, no more nightmares, no more flashbacks. That's how it gets sold online. But when you look at the actual studies, they're tiny, inconsistent, and nowhere near strong enough to say that CBD is a proven PTSD treatment. It's interesting, sure, but we're nowhere close to calling it reliable. And the last big myth, there is the sleep claim, probably the most popular one of all. The story goes just a few drops of CBD and you'll sleep like a baby every night. But biology doesn't work that neatly. CBD interacts with dozens of systems in the brain, and the effects are unpredictable. Some people do feel drowsy, others feel nothing, and some actually find their sleep gets worse. So this idea of CBD as a universal sleep hack, it's more marketing than medicine. So what happens when scientists actually put CBD to the test? The picture is way less clear than the success stories that you see online. Most clinical trials are small, we're talking dozens of people, not the hundreds or thousands you'd want for a solid medical conclusion. And the results? They're all over the place. And that's exactly what you'd expect from tiny studies. The strongest signal we've seen so far is for anxiety. And even then, it shows up mostly in very specific situations, like public speaking tests. CBD seems to take the edge off nerves in those moments. That's interesting, but it's not the same thing as proving it helps people with full-blown anxiety disorders every single day. And when it comes to depression, the evidence is even weaker. Animal studies look great. You can make rats less depressed with CBD. But when researchers test it on humans, the results fall apart. Reviews keep coming to the same conclusion. Right now, the evidence just isn't there. PTSD research is somewhere in the middle. A few pilot studies suggest potential, but they're way too small and inconsistent to call CBD a reliable treatment. It's promising, but nowhere near ready to replace standard care. Now here's where it gets more interesting and more complicated. Unlike many drugs that work like a single key and a single lock, CBD is more like tossing a whole set of keys at dozens of different locks in your brains. Some fit, some don't, and the results depend on which ones happen to turn for you. That's one big reason why two people can take the same dose and have totally different experiences. And then there's dosing itself. One study might use 25 milligrams, another uses 300, and some go into the thousands. That's like testing aspirin at doses ranging from one pill a day to 30 pills a day. Of course, you're gonna get totally different results. And to make it even trickier, CBD doesn't follow a straight line, where more is better. Researchers have found that's called an inverted U-shaped curve, meaning too little may do nothing, 
but too much may backfire. But there's a narrow sweet spot in the middle. But that sweet spot isn't the same for everyone. Compare that to Epidiolex, the one FDA-approved CBD drug. There, the dose is carefully calculated, pharmaceutical grade, and used only for very specific types of epilepsy. With anxiety or depression studies, it's basically a free-for-all. So here is the bottom line. CBD shows some signals, especially for anxiety, but the evidence is inconsistent. The trials are small, and the way it works in the brain is complicated and unpredictable. We're not anywhere close to calling it a proven treatment for depression, anxiety disorders, or PTSD. Now here is the part almost nobody talks about. Even if CBD worked perfectly for mental health, and the science says it doesn't, you'd still have a big problem. Because most of the CDB products you can actually buy, they don't even contain what the label says. A 2017 analysis of 84 online products found that over 25% contained less CBD than advertised. Some had way more. And some even had unexpectedly high THC levels, even though they were sold as THC free. That means you could fail a drug test or feel high from a product that was supposed to be pure CBD. And it doesn't stop there. Independent tests keep finding pesticides, heavy metals, and bottles that are basically just expensive carrier oil with a splash of hemp extract. No wonder the FDA has sent warning letters to companies making bogus claims. Some were even advertising CBD as a cure for COVID. Then there are the health risks people don't realize. CBD blocks the same liver enzymes that process a lot of common medications. Think blood thinners, seizure drugs, even some immunosuppressants. Grapefruit juice does the same thing, but CBD is even stronger. So if you're on one of these meds and your liver can't process it correctly, your blood levels can spike into dangerous territory. Most commonly with psychiatric medications, the antidepressants Zoloft or sertraline, when combined with CBD, can lead to dangerously higher levels of the medication, putting you at higher risk of adverse effects. And high doses of CBD? In clinical trials, they've been linked to liver problems. That's why Epidiolex, the one approved CBD drug, comes with monitoring. Doctors check your liver enzymes. But with gas station or grocery store CBD, nobody's watching. So the risks aren't just it might not work. The risks are you might not get what you paid for, you might test positive for THC, and your medication could build up to toxic levels, and your liver could take a hit. That's a lot more serious than the ads and influencer posts make it sound. So here's the bottom line. CBD is not snake oil. It may help some people with certain symptoms, but it's also not a proven first-line treatment for depression, major anxiety, or PTSD. The evidence is limited, inconsistent, and way weaker than the marketing makes it seem. And even if CBD did work perfectly, the stuff you buy online or at the store is a different story. Labels can be wrong, doses are unpredictable, and it can interact with medications or even stress your liver. So if you're thinking about trying CBD, don't go in blind. Talk to your clinician first, check for a certificate of analysis, and if you're using higher doses while on prescription meds, ask whether you should be monitoring your liver. That's your 24 hour takeaway. Before you buy a bottle, make sure you know what's actually in it and whether it's safe for you. CBD isn't a miracle cure, but it's not worthless either. It's an experiment and the results depend on your body, your brain and the product that you're using. Be curious, be cautious, and most importantly, be informed. Have you ever tried CBD? Did it help or was it just hype? Drop your experience in the comments. I wanna hear the good, the bad, and everything in between. And if you found this helpful, stick around because next time we're breaking down another supplement that's getting a ton of attention. NAC or N-acetylcysteine. Some people swear it helps with mental health, addiction, even compulsive behaviors. But does the science back that up? You'll wanna see that one. Until next time, be safe and be well.